Merry Christmas, and welcome to our Christmas Eve service here at First United Methodist Church in Claremont, Florida. I'm Pastor Doug, and I'm one of the pastors here on staff, and we just want to say welcome and greetings to you as we share this service together. Though we can't be in person sharing it, I want you to share this with your friends. So let's worship our God as we celebrate Christmas Eve. Band, let's worship. Christmas, everybody. Christmas Eve is here as Jesus Christ is born. So today I light the Christ candle because Jesus is here. Let us pray. Almighty Savior, Emmanuel, God who has come into the world to be with us now. Lord, you give us hope for we do not have to be afraid no matter what comes our way. You give us peace among this chaotic world. You are the Prince of Peace. You bring us joy despite our circumstances, for you are always with us. And you give us unending love, and nothing separates us from that love. 
So Lord, we come to you today to worship, to praise, to celebrate you, the birth of our Savior. And everyone said, amen. Christmas church family. We hope, we pray you are doing well. We want to take a time right now to open up God's Word and to hear from our scriptures. We are going to be walking through and journeying through the Gospel of Luke. So wherever you are watching us this uh, morning, this afternoon, this evening, we want to encourage you to follow along. We're in the Gospel of Luke chapter 2 and hear the Word of the Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So everyone sojourned to be registered, each to their own town. Joseph also sojourned with his family to the town from the town of Nazareth, in Galilee, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was from the household and the family line of King David. 
He went to be registered with his fiance, his wife, his bride-to-be Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant at this time. While they were there, the time came that Mary would give birth to her firstborn child. And there she was as she gave birth to her firstborn son. She picked him up, she wrapped him tightly in cloth, and she laid him in a manger because there was no room for her or her husband or their child in the inn. Continuing on in our story from Luke 2. And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests.
As we continue in the Gospel of Luke, we pick up on verse 15 that says, When the angels had left the shepherds and returned to, he uh, to heaven, they said to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in a manger. After seeing them, they reported the message they were told about the child, and all who heard it were amazed. They were amazed at what the shepherds had to say to them, but Mary, but Mary was treasuring up all of these things in her heart, and she was meditating upon them. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all of the things that they had seen and heard, which were just as they were told. Church family, this is the Word of God. Oh, greetings to all of you this Christmas Eve. As we gather thanking God, it is so awkward. We're having to do it online. We're not able to be here in person. In fact, I was thinking last year, at this time when we were gathering here in the Wesley Center here in Claremont, Florida, 
We had people, we had to start, I think we started 15 minutes late because we had to find more chairs to pack in more people. And if we would have stopped and said, hey, you know, we're not going to be able to do this next year. We all would have looked at each other and said, that's crazy. Who would think like that? No one, that doesn't make sense. In fact, even when March came, and we had to say, no more can we gather in the sanctuary. We all thought, maybe by summer, it would be normal. Maybe by fall, and certainly by Christmas, we could be back gathered. But none of that has happened. Wow, what a crazy year we have been through. None of us could have imagined None of us could have planned. None of us could have anticipated what we have all been through. In fact, in light of everything that has been changing, in light of all the adapting, adjusting, and reinventing, and all the things that we have to do continuously without stopping, all of that being said, how appropriate today and this night to celebrate the unchanging God that we serve. And the Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let us celebrate tonight the birth of Christ, and the unchanging gospel message of our God. And as we do, we're going to share, as you heard the scripture read, I want to take you on a journey, the journey of Mary and Joseph. As we have heard and as we've read, they had to go to their house and the line where their lineage was. And for Joseph, it was Bethlehem. So here he is, Mary, nine months pregnant. We're going to take you on a journey because I have to register in Bethlehem. And you're pledged to be my wife. So you've got to go with me. So he takes Mary nine months pregnant, loads her on a donkey, and they go approximately 80 miles. Now, loading a pregnant woman on a donkey to go 90 miles would be a challenge. <laughs> In fact, it's the mode of transportation. They didn't have any other option. There were no charter buses. There were no frequent flyer miles to get them from somewhere to somewhere else. They had nothing. So they set out 80 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. But just think of the journey. In the Gospel of Matthew, as well as we shared from Luke, they both had encounters with God. In fact, the angels appeared to Mary. You're going to be with child. How many times did she replay that story? How many times did she say in her heart, Joseph, this is what the angel told me. This is God's child that I'm carrying. And how many times did Joseph say, man, I was ready to bolt. The angel showed up and said, no, you will take her as your wife. And you're going to name him Jesus. With all that being said, they played that over thinking, we're going to get to Bethlehem. This is so cool what God has arranged and lined up. We're going to get there. Maybe we'll just get like a really nice room and, and I just need a bed so I can get off this donkey and get a, a nice place to, if it's chilly, because scholars feel sometimes it was September or not, uh, December, some feel it's as late as March when actually he was born. Regardless, it was cold. It was chilly. Maybe there's some blankets and warm thing, and they'll get there, maybe a little fire to warm up. I can't wait. It's going to be great when we finally get there. They arrive. And when they arrive, there is no room. There is no room, as the Bible said, and you heard uh, it read, there was no room in the inn. Was there one inn, several inns? How many doors were closed? How many people pushed him away and said, no, I'm sorry, you can't. So they ended up in a stable. Let me talk about a stable. A stable was either a barn or a cave in rock where animals stayed. We try to think of it as 
the Christmas card with the soft glow and the real nice setting and, ah, oh, Mary and Joseph. It was where animals were. There was straw. There was hay. There was feed. It smelled. There were cows. There were sheep. There's probably chickens running around. I mean, it was where animals were. Silent night, holy night. It was noisy. You had animals everywhere. And just think about it. Here she is pregnant. And he says, here, honey, I want you to lay here. We'll try to make it comfortable for you. And as she lays down, nine months pregnant, and he's sitting there, she's like, I need a cup of water. What? I need water. I can't hear you. The cows are not lowing. They're mooing. I got to get them out of here so I can hear what's going on. In fact, the noise kept going. I'll get you some water. And here's that chicken again. He comes back again. I'm going to barbecue it. He couldn't take it. All of these animals, all of this noise. Was it warm? Was it safe? Was it quiet? Was it peaceful? No. It was challenging, it was messy, it was uncomfortable, it was ugly. Nothing like they ever anticipated. Nothing that they ever dreamed of. A baby in a cave, in a stable. They couldn't even imagine that it would end up this way. But wait, God is in the mix. What happened? Where are the angels? Is this really the way it's supposed to be? Let's look at ourselves. Here we are, 2020, Christmas Eve. In fact, the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic is awful, has been awful, and it's not going away. There's the hope of the vaccine, but that's to come way down the road. And not only a pandemic, but you take our normal life issues and the challenges we struggle with. In fact, even for children, having to go home and be virtual learners, and they're like, they've never done that before. Social distancing, a term we're tired of. Self-quarantine, all of that. And then all of these life issues on top of it, especially for those with furloughed or been off, laid off from their jobs or even lost their jobs, family members who've lost loved ones. And even as, as pastors, we have to minister over the phone to people. It's a challenge. And as many of you, you've, you've lost loved ones in nursing homes and other places and you haven't been able to be there with them. And that's been a challenge. It's like, Marriages have been stressed out and some have fallen apart. Finances have been just miserable. Family issues, health concerns beyond COVID, all of these challenges are real. Nothing like we ever could imagine, nothing we could ever anticipate, nothing that we ever wanted, and they're real. In fact, oftentimes it leaves us shaking our heads saying, what the heck's going on? What's going on? I didn't want this. I didn't want any of this. How could this even be happening? And maybe some of you have had these powerful encounters with God. And though you don't say it out loud, you're thinking in your own spirit, really? Why me? Why is this happening? It's not what I wanted, anticipated, imagined or even dreamed of. But in the midst of Mary and Joseph, in their setting, with all the chaos and the craziness of that cave with the animals, all this confusion, here they are adapting, probably trying to make a bed, trying to make things comfortable, make things right. Jesus is born. And they look into the eyes of their baby. And as most new parents, tears of joy just flow. And you're holding your baby. Mary and Joseph are looking into the eyes of God. 
I wonder if Joseph said, welcome, Jesus. Welcome, Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. As they were cleaning the baby up and holding him, they started to process, we're holding the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Wow. And as they were there, as the story continued, who shows up? Shepherds. Not only were they in this lowly, stable cave feed place for the baby in a feed trough to lay him with a blanket, making a little bed for him. Who shows up but these shepherds? A bunch of shepherds. They were the lowliest of the employees of the day. Many of the, uh, the religious leaders wouldn't even go near them because they couldn't keep any ceremonial laws because they always smelled. In fact, shepherds were the lowliest. And the angel appears to them in the field and tells them to go. So they show up at Mary and Joseph in this overcrowded town. Here come the shepherds. It wasn't the mayor. It wasn't the city council. It wasn't all the people showing up saying, oh my goodness, look what we brought to you. Here's welcome, the key to the city. No, shepherds. And they start to tell stories about this angel lighting up the sky in a field. And then I love it, how Mary, as you heard it read, treasured and pondered all of these things. Made, Whoa, this is more than I could comprehend. This is powerful. And any question that you'd ever say, like, who, what is this baby? Who is this baby? What does all this mean? Gone. Nothing mattered. Because he is God. He's with us. He's God in the flesh. He's here. In the book of Colossians, it said he's the visible image of an invisible God. Talk about a new normal for Mary and Joseph. Incredible. God right there in their midst. For us, this Christmas Eve as we gather, what a beautiful reminder of reality in the midst of uncertainty and chaos, confusion, disorder, darkness, sin, brokenness, and just plain ugly, where nothing is turning out the way you want it to turn out, that's when God shows up. That's when God does his greatest work. He goes to any extent in an overcrowded town of Bethlehem, in overcrowded hearts of people, I'm going to show up. So as we celebrate the birth of Christ, as we think of Jesus being born some 2,000 years ago, where are you right now? Because the presence of Jesus is alive and he is here with us. Have your dreams changed? Have your plans changed? Has everything changed? And the answer most likely, yes, as with all of us. Are things not what you wanted, imagined, anticipated, any way possible? But in light of all of that, that's when God shows up. That's when God, Jesus said, in the book of Revelation, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Anyone who opens the door, I will come in and I will be with him. That's when he shows up. Invite him in. Invite him in to do his greatest work yet in your life. Don't settle for past experiences that you've had. Allow the birth and the presence of Jesus Christ into your life to do his greatest work yet. Thanks be to God for the presence of Christ. A baby who grew up, who lived, taught, loved, debated, showed us the way to God, died on the cross for our sins, was raised to life, and now lives and reigns forever. Let this Christmas 
be the opportunity where you open your life, open your heart, and allow God to do his greatest work yet. Maybe you've already accepted Christ. And maybe it's time to recommit your life and say, God, do your greatest work yet in my life. Thanks be to God for the birth of Jesus. Thanks be to God for his presence today in the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you're our God. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. And as we come, to Lord, tonight, we take this time as we gather to understand. And Lord, if anybody is here who has never invited you into their lives, let this be the time. Let this be the hour when you say, Jesus, I want to know you. I want to know the peaceful reality of the salvation of my soul. I want to know my sins are forgiven. I have a home with you in heaven. And I want to know, Lord, that you're my God. Come into my life. Maybe that's your prayer tonight, this Christmas Eve. For others, maybe you've already made a decision for Christ, but you've wandered and you've allowed circumstances, you've allowed life. To crowd him out. And as we come, maybe your prayer is, Lord, I want to recommit my life to you right now. I recommit to you, Jesus, and ask for your forgiveness. I ask for your grace. I ask for your mercy. And as we come, Lord God, let this be the hour and the day we yield our hearts to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Do your greatest work yet in every heart, from every child to every older adult, for all of us who are listening, be with us this day, this hour, and for the rest of our lives as we surrender to you. Thank you, Jesus. Come, do your greatest work. In your holy and gracious name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen.
as we worship tonight, this is when we would typically be passing out candles, and all of you would have those. And as we gather, it would be the time when we'd light our candles from the Christ candle, understanding that the light of Jesus Christ is now in the world. And may the light of Jesus Christ be in our hearts and lives. As this light symbolizes the presence of Christ in the world and in our lives, this is the light we share with others and the hope of God to the world that desperately needs to understand the Savior is here. Silent night, holy night. As we conclude our service, it is our prayer that you accepted Christ, maybe for the first time, or you recommitted your life. That is our prayer for all of us as we experience the joy, the presence of Christ in the world. As we come tonight and as we say, thank you for taking this time to share with this. On behalf of all of us here at First United Methodist Church, in Claremont, Florida. Myself and the pastors, Pastor Chris, Pastor Dawn, for the band and as they gather, for the tech team behind the scenes, on behalf of all of us here, we want to take this opportunity to, to wish you 
a Merry Christmas. Thanks be to God for this day. Merry Christmas.